Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Point of Insanity Game Studios Geekery in General Podcast. I am Al, and today we're going to go on a 16-bit flashback. Yes, we're moving up in the world here as we take a look at Fantasy Star 2 for the Sega Genesis. Now, I never had a Sega Genesis when I was growing up. I was primarily a Nintendo fanboy. I started out with the 8-bit Nintendo, and then, rather than getting a Genesis, I waited for the Super Nintendo to come out. As we can see on the copyright date from the title screen here, this game was made in 89, the year that the Genesis came out in the US, and it came out earlier in Japan, and I don't remember when the European Union got the Sega Genesis, but... This is the time when I first heard the term console wars. Now, of course, the console wars have been going on pretty much ever since there have been multiple video game consoles available on the market, but for me, a lot of my fondest memories of the console wars and all the advertising and such that goes with it comes from the 16-bit era. Of course, back in 89, Sega was really hitting on the point that the Sega Genesis was 16-bit. So now we'd have better music, better graphics, and in theory, better games. Whereas Nintendo, well, they just had that old 8-bit Nintendo. That was the, you know, that was the kid's toy. That was old. You know, you didn't want that. You wanted to get the newest, the greatest. You wanted the Sega Genesis. And, of course, one of their slogans they used back then, which, of course, you would never get away with today, is Genesis does what Nintendo don't. And I'm sure for any other old-school gamers out there, when I said that, you probably just had the jingle flash through your head, didn't you? Don't worry, it happens to me, too, whenever I hear that phrase. Now, the Fantasy Star 2 also holds fond memories for me in another way as well. This was my first taste of a 16-bit RPG. Now, of course, the Super Nintendo didn't come out until a couple years later, uh, 91, I believe. So a lot of the role-playing games I was playing, they were limited to what they could do on the 8-bit, uh, such as Dragon Warrior and Final Fantasy. There were a couple others I played, like uh, Wizardry, um, Ossel. Uh, there was another one, the name fell out of... Oh yes, Might and Magic. Uh, they did release a version of Might and Magic for the uh, 8-bit Nintendo. And if you remember my episode I did with my friends Dan and Dave from Radio Free Borderlands, we talked a little bit about that game. It really wasn't that great. So we're just going to continue. I do have one file saved here to my, uh, well, not my Genesis, because I don't have a, a Genesis, but uh, this is the file that I have on my Super Nintendo. No, not Super Nintendo, my Nintendo Wii U. Ugh, sorry, everyone, it's been one of those types of days. Now, one of the things that really made a big impression on me right from the get-go is the music. I don't know why, but for some reason, the music for this game really hits. It just really perfectly conveys the mood of this... I'm not sure how you would really define the style of, like, the architecture and the game and the, the costumes and clothes people wear, but kind of this whole... Well, for lack of a better term, retro future, what people thought people would be wearing you know, 50, 100 years from now. That's actually uh, an interesting subject on its own where, you know, you go back and look at old uh, magazines like Popular Mechanics, or sometimes you'll see other magazines have like the House of the Future and other predictions of what they thought life would be like in the far-flung year of 2000. 
Yes, I know, it's nothing like they predicted, but that was the uh, 50s or 60s that they usually made these predictions of flying cars and all that weird stuff. And we'll get in a battle in just a moment. And I do admit, I've never really gotten very far in this game. I have seen the ending because I did have friends who had the game, and I have seen the ending there. So this is one of the things that really took a lot of getting used to, because you know normally you're just going to press fight, and your characters are going to just automatically fight. Yay, we are victorious. Now, uh, the other thing that really takes a lot of getting used to is, again, just the menu setup, because you go down to STGY, Strategy, um, and then that's how you have to enter orders. Like, if we want to have Nay here cast a spell, which, this is another thing that I didn't really like about Fantasy Star, though, especially when you're playing it on the uh, Nintendo Wii emulator like I am right now, is they don't you know, they don't tell you what the, the spells really do. Now, of course, in the, uh, the instruction manual, they had, you know, the descriptions of what each of the spells do, but like, Foy, G-Foy, Su, Zan, I have no idea what these spells do. Uh, Res, I know, is the, is your main healing spell, and then I believe Foy is, Foy or G-Foy is your, uh, basic damage spell. Yeah, there we go, Rest, that was your healing spell, G-Foy. Which, that's what I hated, though, with that. It's... It doesn't look like they really gave you a way to decide which enemy you wanted to target. I could be wrong on that. I haven't played this game in a couple of years. Yeah, like, like I said, for some reason, just the music in this game just... It really seems to fit the mood and the atmosphere. And I know, of course, Sega would go on to produce other uh, Fantasy Star games. Uh, one of them that I heard about but never really played is... I believe it was Fantasy Star 3. They introduced something which I thought was incredibly creative for the time. And that was how the story took place over several generations. So what you would do is... There were times where you had to decide who your character was going to get married, and that would have some effect on the uh, next generation of characters that you would play. So, I really liked that idea. Again, I'm pretty sure that it was Fantasy Star 3 that did that. It may have been 4, I'm not really sure. Let's see, and then, oh yes, item and defend. So, that's really my main gripe about the game, is just the fact that... Uh, the it's a little harder to play looking back than it is to play back then because you know they couldn't say you know healing spell or you know damaging spell and I know that one of the characters you get later in the game he has spells that are specifically designed to damage machines oh yes this is another thing that really kind of bothered me when I was playing this game is I did not like the indoor labyrinths because you know, they have that overlay, I guess you could say, of pipes, like it's supposed to be, I don't know, some sort of uh, piping system on the ceiling. It looks kind of cool at first, but after a while, it just gets, I don't know why, it just gets really bothersome after a while. Oh yeah, this is, you can only really choose what group you want to attack, you know, you can't really choose which enemy, so that was another real major drawback of the game, at least from my opinion. Another thing that always not really bothered me, but oh, I thought was kind of interesting is how they pictured Nay or Ni N E I. I'm not sure how you pronounce her name. How they uh, pictured her in the game art and on the art on the cover of the game because they're they're two entirely different things where like on the cover of the actual game she she looks kind of like a troll but in the actual game itself it takes more of an anime style well i think that's about all i really have to say about
Fantasy Star 2 for now. Like I said, it does have some fond memories for me, even though I've never beaten this game on my own, and I really haven't played too, too far into it. The furthest I've gotten is... I know Nii uh, does die in the game, and then after that part, all of a sudden now you're fighting uh, mostly robots instead of organic creatures. So that's where the guy who has the spell specifically designed to injure robots and machines, that's where he really comes in handy. I say, you do get an interesting cast of characters. Uh, of course, you have the main character, who is your pretty much uh, kind of versatile, all-around guy, uh, Rudo, who's basically a powerful fighter. I don't remember the other names of the characters, but I know there's a medic you get, there is a, a hunter you get. I'm trying to think of some of the others, because the hunter, I believe, is the one that, she's a woman who uses mostly boomerangs. Like I said, there was the guy who specifically damages machines, and I think there's one other character. I remember some other interesting challenges just watching the some friends of mine play the game. I mean, I know there's different planets you go to, and there's one section of the game where there's a ship you're trying to escape from, and your characters are bound, so you can't use your weapons or spells. You pretty much just have to keep running, so I can imagine how that section would be a headache. Well, I'm not sure if uh, Fantasy Star 2 is available on the current Wii U Virtual Console. I believe it's still just available on the regular Wii Virtual Console. I'm not sure what other ports there have been. I believe it appears on one of the Xbox 360 Sega Genesis collections, so that's another way you can check this game out. Well, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to this episode. I know it's a little shorter than my flashback episodes usually are, but thanks for tuning in, and have a good evening, or morning, or afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are, and happy gaming.